Hi, my name is François Maréchal. I'm professor in industrial process and energy systems engineering in Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne in Switzerland. I'm going to present you the way a country can become 100% renewable, even with negative carbon dioxide emissions. In order to do this, we have first to understand what, is the need, what are our needs. First, we need food, we need energy to operate our body, the equivalent of 25 centiliters of oil equivalent every day. In order to live, to move and to produce, we consume 5.5 five and five and five liters of uh, oil every day. The production and our consumption create waste, the equivalent of two kilograms per day, in which 700 grams is in form of bio-waste. But more importantly, we are creating carbon dioxide that is emitted in the atmosphere at a rate of 14 kilograms per day. So, if we want to reduce this amount of carbon dioxide, we have to see where we consume this energy. 45% of the energy that is consumed in Switzerland is for housing and uh, living in buildings. Most of this energy is consumed in winter in form of heating purposes and is supplied by fossil resources. In addition, we have 36% that is consumed for mobility, mainly also, by the way, of fossil resources, and 17% is consumed in the industry, half in form of industry, in electricity, half in form of heat. I have to add to this that we need also carbon for our products that we produce, and those, this carbon is also coming from uh, oil resources, and it corresponds to an equivalent of 2% of our energy consumption. So, the goal is to reach uh, zero carbon dioxide emissions in 2050, so how can we solve the problem? Of course, we need an energy resource, and there, of course, there is a quite trivial answer, the sun. Sun is giving us, and the whole world, in 1.5 hours, enough energy to feed all our needs, even without doing any effort. It means also that in one year we receive enough uh, uh, energy to live for 6,500 years. Of course, we need to harvest it. Something that we can also ask ourselves is that why don't we use the energy that we receive every day instead of using the energy that was stored 300 million years ago in form of fossil resources. So it means that we have to understand the conversion chain. The conversion chain comes from the primary energy resources and goes back to the need. And the first element that is going to influence the demand is the population. Unfortunately, the population is going to grow and fortunately, the population will uh, have access to more comfort. And this means uh, will require more uh, services. Of course, Services can be supplied in a much more efficient way. So for example, buildings can become more efficient. But the problem is that if due to the increase of the population uh, and the increase of the comfort, even if we are more efficient, it appears that the service to be supplied uh, as comfort in the buildings will uh, require the same amount of energy. So we have to ask ourselves, how do we supply these uh, services in a much uh, more efficient way? We can ask thermodynamics, and thermodynamics is telling us that when we have to heat something at 21 degrees C and the temperature outside is zero degrees C, Carnot, which was a famous thermodynamicist, did show and demonstrate that nine of the 10 units that are needed can be uh, harvested in the environment, and only one of the unit needs to be bought in form of work or electricity. So then we have to ask ourselves why we still continue to burn natural gas in the very efficient boilers, because this boiler is going to spend 11 units to supply 10 units of heat. So we have to ask ourselves why we are so inefficient. We use 11 times more energy than the amount that we owe to, uh, to buy according to thermodynamics. And the answer is use heat pumps. Of course, the heat pumps will not go to the minimum amount given by the theory, but it will be much better than, uh, than the boiler. So what is also inside the heat pump is the fact that we have to go uh, to harvest the heat in the environment. And of course, we have to go at the best place for this uh, 
uh, harvesting the heat. At the same time, what the formula is tell telling us is that the lower the temperature at which we heat, the lower will be the amount of electricity that we will uh, need to drive the heat pump. So one of the idea would be then to say, why don't we cut the, uh, the heat pump into two parts? On the one hand, a heat pump that is going at the right place to harvest the heat, where it is at the highest quality. And on the other hand, uh, a heat pump that is going to supply the services at the temperature that is needed. For linking the two heat pumps, then I need a heat transfer fluid. And the heat transfer fluid that we have selected is carbon dioxide. So what does it mean in the city? In the city, we will have two pipes. One liquid pipe with carbon dioxide in liquid form and one gas pipe with carbon dioxide in the gas form. When we need heat, we will take the heat from the gas and condense it to supply uh, back, to give back a liquid. The temperature is 8, 17 degrees C, but with a heat pump, I can always reach the temperature that is needed for the service, being heat producing hot water or heating buildings. Something which is very interesting with this concept is that I can also then uh, supply the cold because I, can, I have the liquid carbon dioxide that can be evaporated to uh, supply cooling, for example, to data centers or shopping malls. And by doing this, I'm going to recover the heat that needs to be evacuated from the shopping malls to heat buildings. And this is then uh, some sort of a magic system. The magic is even better when I'm looking at the, the heat sources that I have in the city, the industry, the way, municipal waste incineration that produce heat. I can convert this heat into electricity and the remaining heat, I can send it in the district heating at 17 degrees C. And I provide the, the industry with a very nice cooling source. Of course, I need to balance. And I will, I'm going to balance it by looking at the uh, uh, sources that I have in the environment. So for example, the wastewater treatment plant, lakes, rivers, or geothermal wells that can supply the heat or the cold that is needed. A beauty of the approach with the carbon dioxide network is that the carbon dioxide is not freezing. So it means that I can hide the pipes in the pedestrian waste and even make prefabricated pedestrian waste where I would have the two pipes embedded into uh, the system. And this, this will take much less places than the amount that is needed when I'm doing district heating in a conventional way. Well, this is a very nice solution for uh, the, the conventional countries, uh, cities in Europe. But what about tropical cities? But indeed it works as well because the tropical cities will need cooling and I can use the carbon dioxide as a way to transport the cold to uh, the buildings as sensible heat or as latent heat, and I can recover the heat to produce the hot water that I need. I will use uh, electricity to drive those heat pumps, and I will go at the right place to collect the cold um, in the city. So what we have shown is that in this situation, we were much more efficient than the conventional district heating si cooling system, and even more efficient than, than, and of course, more efficient than the conventional air conditioning units without creating any heat island effect. So it seems to be magic. So what we did is that we did make a real study. So we, will, we will have uh, looked at the city center of Geneva and looked at what was the consequence. So in this city center, what we have shown is that we were able to divide by a factor six, the energy bill of the city, removing all the boilers and having only electricity to be supplied. And this factor six was even cheap in the sense that even if we have to buy heat pumps and district heating and cooling systems, the payback time was six years. And the adjustment corresponding to around 10K euro per capita. So now the question is, how do we supply this electricity? Well, the easiest way is to add solar panels on the roof. So I'm going to take the buildings, I'm going to add the heat pump, I'm going to add solar panels on the roof. And what we know is that the solar panels are becoming cheaper and cheaper. So that's the best way to supply the energy to the system. Unfortunately, the sun is not shining most of the time when I need to be heated. So I will have to add a control system and storage systems, batteries, hot water tanks, 
and I will have to coordinate the presence of the sun, the presence of the people, and the operation of my heat pumping system. So it means that I have to install a smart control system that will use internet as an information and predictions in order to make the best coordination for the supply of the energy. When we assemble everything, then we realize that only 10% of the amount of energy that is needed, heating and, co and uh, cooling and the electrical needs, only 10% needs to be supplied from an, an, an external energy resources. Two thirds is already supplied by the PV panel. So how do we supply the remaining? Well, we have to find a, a system that is efficient in producing electricity, and the answer is fuel cells, especially solid oxide fuel cells that allows not only to produce electricity with a very high efficiency up to 80%, but it, has, it can also separate the carbon dioxide. So even if I'm using gas, I will have carbon dioxide in the tube, and I have the tubes, and I can recover the heat because I have the district heating system that is dis distributing the heat. Of course, I'm going to use the biomass. The biomass, that is the waste that is produced by the people to produce synthetic natural gas. So instead of using fossil natural gas, I'm going to use synthetic natural gas that is a biogas. Efficiency of these systems can be quite high if I'm using uh, thermochemical conversion processes. And if I'm using thermochemical uh, processes, I'm even going to separate the carbon dioxide that is a byproduct of this production. Another dimension which is important to realize is that in the use of the PV panels, I realize that I have an excess of electricity available in the summer. Because in the summer, I do not need a lot of energy. Um, and therefore, uh, I will have an excess. So how do I deal with this excess? Well, the idea would be to do what the nature is doing when it has too much electricity, uh, energy available. I can take the energy from the sun, convert it into electricity, use the carbon dioxide that was in my pipes and the water that is also available in the pipes, and by co-electrolysis, produce methane. And methane can be stored in a liquid form and we know how to do it. The efficiency of such systems from the sun to the methane is 13 to 16%, so 10 times better than the photosynthesis. Now, I will have a system that in the summer, when I will have too much electricity, when I will have too much electricity, I will produce methane. And in the winter, when I need this electricity, then I'm going to take fuel cells that is going to produce the electricity that is needed by the heat pumps, that is going to release the waste heat in the district uh, heating system, and it is going to supply the carbon dioxide that will be stored in the liquid form and then sent back to uh, the co-electrolysis in the summer period. Now I have a very nice system that is completely driven by the energy that I have on the roofs, that is using my waste, and that it can even sequestrate the carbon dioxide that has entered the system, the carbon dioxide that has entered the system in form of carbon hydrate with the biomass. So when we look at this system, uh, we come from a system that was fossil based into a 100% renewable system that is, uh, that will of course require an investment that will require PV panels on the roof, the equivalent of 25 square meter per inhabitant, that will require one meter of new pipe per inhabitant, and that will require 12 kilograms per capita uh, to um, uh, operate the district system. But the beauty of this is that all the money that we invest there is used in the local economy, is used to uh, develop the infrastructure, is used to manage the energy, and therefore it will create jobs. So I had the problem now, uh, solve the problem of the industry, but it was only uh, half of the problem. So what does it mean for the rest? The first thing that I'm going to discuss is the industry. So industry needs heat for making products, but it's also needing carbon as a source for producing plastics, for example. The way it is done today, it is based on oil. And typically, it is based on the waste of the production of the fuel. So we have refineries that do produce hydrocarbons that can then afterwards com be converted into uh, different types of products. So the industry for doing this operation needs heat, 
and needs electricity. And at the same time, it's carbon. So how do we supply at the same time the carbon, the heat, and the electricity? So one of um, the solution is uh, first to reduce the demand. So efficiency, which is typically the hidden fuel. So the first thing is that we have to think the industry in a symbiosis way. The symbiosis means that the industry will share uh, energy resources, share heat, share uh, waste management uh, systems, share um, uh, equipment as well. And by doing this, then we will create a much more efficient overall system. Still, this system will need some heat. And of course, I'm not going to supply this heat with oil. So what can I do? Well, I can use biomass. Biomass can be used as a carbon source to produce bioproducts, and it can also be used in order to produce biofuel. When we look at the biomass, when we convert biomass into, for example, methane, we realize that this operation is exothermic. So it supplies heat. So the idea would be then to create new boilers, new boilers that are going to supply heat to the industry and co-generate fuel that can be used for other purposes. As the energy that is entering the, the, the industry uh, has to leave the industry, uh, at the end, I'm also going to connect my cities with the district heating system and use the source of the industry as a heat source. Something which is also interesting with biomass is that the biomass has oxygen in it, and the oxygen has to leave and typically leaves during the conversion process in form of carbon dioxide. And you remember that we know how to deal with this carbon dioxide because I can use it as a way to store uh, energy if I have too much energy from the stochastic renewable energy sources. So I have at the same time the way to produce products, to produce heat for the industry, to produce fuels, and to store energy from uh, stochastic resources. Well, it means that if I'm creating a circular economy, I will integrate the food production, I use the, the waste management, the production of products, the production of fuel, and the production of heat for the city. So I have already a very nice uh, integrated system. He means to be solved the mobility, 36% of our consumption. And the solution is, of course, to electrify it. If we electrify, we will be much more efficient. But we will need electricity, and we will need stored electricity. So how do we get this amount of electricity? Well, two ways. The biofuels that I have produced in the industry from the biomass, and the wind and hydro that I have not already used. And those resources can be used for the transportation. And I remind you that I have a way to convert electricity into biofuels uh, in a, uh, a stored way. So, of course, I will produce biofuels like biokerosene or liquid fuel. I will have electrical cars, I will have electrical trucks. And when they need a long range, so it means smaller batteries, um, then I will use uh, range extenders which will be based on fuel cells that will use hydrogen, natural gas, or even liquid fuel. Something which is also interesting there is that it's possible that in my system, I will not need the overall amount of carbon dioxide that is collected in the system. So what do I do with this excess? Well, what I can do is to make a chemical reaction that is going to mineralize the carbon dioxide. This operation is exothermic, so I can recover the heat for my, uh, for heating my cities. And in this case, the carbonates that will be produced will then be uh, sequestrated for the long time. The potential, if I'm looking at the biomass that is entering the system that has harvested the carbon dioxide in the, in the atmosphere, and the amount of carbonate that I can produce, I have the potential in Switzerland to capture three kilograms of kilo of carbon dioxide per day and per inhabitant. Starting from the 14 that were emitted, I have now a minus three kilogram that is sequestrated. So the country is therefore not only 100% renewable, but as well uh, becoming a carbon dioxide thing. So what does it mean at the end to realize the system? 
We will need authorities, authorities that need to develop the infrastructure. We have to have trained people that are able to implement and understand the, uh, the, the new system. We need to have industry and engineers that will be there to help us to operate and to build and operate the system in the optimal way. And of course, we will need bankers that need to give us the money to realize this. In EPFL, we are working uh, at the level of the research in order to provide all those technologies, being the people working with the solar cells development, the catalyst development in the chemical industry, or for producing methane, or for, for producing hydrogen. Uh, there are people also that works on the CO2 capture from understanding what is happening inside molecules up to how they have to be uh, implemented. People that work on fuel cells and co-electrolysis, that is a key technology for uh, the system realization. And of course, people that are able to understand how the system has to be assembled and operated. I will end up by giving some uh, acknowledgement. So first, I would la like to say thank you to the sun because it's the one that is supplying us the energy. I will have also to thank Mother Nature because it shows us the way and especially the way to store the energy. I will have to thank Carnot because he has showed us that the uh, environment is very important to look at the energy services that we need. We have to thank the industry because uh, the industry is giving us the technologies and we have to thank engineers because they are able to assemble and use in an optimal way at the right time the technologies that uh, are needed to supply our needs. We will have to uh, acknowledge the contribution of the research that is not only providing us with solutions, but also that is educating people uh, that solutions exist. I will have to thank the authorities because they are not only responsible for developing and helping the development of the infrastructure, but they are also there to develop the education system and have trained people. And of course, I will have to uh, thank the finance people who have to learn how to ethically use our money for the right goals. So, thank you very much. <laughs>